lovely funnelies. Today I'm going to be discussing how to find the store for your autoimmune protocol journey. Now before I get into it, because I'm not a doctor and even if I was, here is a disclaimer. Check it out. All right, you read it? You're not gonna sue me? You know you're gonna proceed, okay, without any like lawful intentions? Okay, <laughs> wonderful. So to get into this, I actually have a blog post about it that I'm gonna put in the, a link for in the description below. It goes into um, all sorts of different things to check out in order to assess properly uh, what kind of store you need to work with that you can go to repeatedly again and again if you wanted to uh, for your autoimmune protocol journey. And so these are, this is a breakdown of five helpful tips, maybe even a bonus if I can think of one on the way, like on the fly, uh, <laughs> of how to figure out if this is the store for you. Okay, now uh, I'm definitely going to keep you posted if there's any more updates to this. I might like make this a part one. Uh, there might be more uh, coming out, but of course I'm gonna have future videos that are gonna break down each store that I personally go to and the different items that I especially like. I'm gonna try to show you as many pictures as possible, mission as many specific items as possible. And if they are available on Amazon, since I know most people do have access to Amazon and I am an Amazon affiliate, which means if you purchase a link, uh, it'll give me a commission at no cost to you, um, then that'll be always an option for you as well if you don't feel like going to the store or if you can't, you know? But anyway, getting into this video. So the first thing that you should check out about a store to make sure it's autoimmune protocol friendly is their produce section. There's nothing more that you are going to eat than <laughs> produce when you're on autoimmune protocol. It's all about fresh ingredients, I'm not going to insist on organic, though, you know, of course, many health, you know, conscious doctors or physicians or nutritionists or whatever are going to strongly recommend everything be organic. But, I mean, you have to understand what's feasible and what's within, in line with your budget because oftentimes if you're buying something organic, it's going to be pricey. It's going to be probably several dollars more than what you could also get, you know, in much greater quantity if it was a lesser price. Of course, wonderful places that have amazing uh, produce sections would be Whole Foods, of course. I think most of their stuff, if not all of it, is organic, which makes it easier to, for you to know what's, you know, organic and what's not. There's a very fine, uh, fine line and very it's very plainly distinguished pretty much they tell you everything uh, uh every place that the the, uh, the item uh, i'm tongue tied again i'm sorry every everything about the item pretty much the whole breakdown that's the one thing i do like about whole foods is you know where your food is coming from pretty much most of the time anyway so that's whole foods they have a great produce section they have a lot of uh various ingredients. They often usually have lemongrass, a lot of great fresh herbs. They have fresh bay leaves in their selection, um, in their uh, produce section. They have, let me see, they have like, um, they have the purple, the sweet potato, the purple sweet potato, the Japanese sweet potato. Uh, they, I think it's called a bonito, or I want to say it's a bonito, but I could be wrong. But anyway, uh, let me see what else. They have, uh, I can't think of any other exotic stuff. They do have a lot. I think they even have a lot of different things. It's all very seasonal though, but that's a good thing because you don't want stuff so out of season that it may contain extra pesticides or whatever have you. Then of course you should always consult the Dirty Dozen. They have like a Dirty Dozen list of vegetables. I think celery and strawberry are like always on that list. Um, I don't really eat strawberries that much because they said strawberries may contain brewer's yeast, so ugh, it is what it is. I will use products with strawberry extract for like whitening, like they're it's used for my toothpaste, which I also get from Whole Foods, by the way. So you should check out my Whole Foods shopping list. That is going to be posted on my website soon, and I may even make a video about it as well. Uh, but anyway, yes, there's a lot of different wonderful produce options there. Another one is the fresh market. I like the fresh market as well, mainly because they have exotic fruits. That's the only place I've ever gone where I've seen golden dragon fruit, which is one of my favorite fruits, as well as they have all these different other melons. They have a, I think it was called a pomelo, which is like this enormous orange, or I mean, it's part of the grapefruit family, I think. It tastes like a grapefruit, uh, but anyway, uh, I think it's pretty much a grapefruit, but it's really good for digestion. I know um, I try to eat it after 
um, I eat something I'm not really supposed to have, like usually containing dairy because it really helps in my digestion. It's a pretty pricey fruit as well, but it does help with the digestion uh, to make sure it goes more smoothly and it has a whole bunch of other benefits as well if you want to try it for yourself one day. Um, if Amazon has it or Whole Foods, if there's a link through Amazon to get it from Whole Foods, I'll definitely put that in the link below. If not, just, you know, go buy a Rush Market or maybe another, possibly even an Asian market uh, that may, can, may have that. Don't know if it's going to be organic, but I would suggest trying as many exotic fruits as possible because exotic fruits have a very unique flavor. They, you know, give you some variety if you're feeling like you're eating the same thing every single day. And they have a lot of benefits. I mean, there are so many Asian fruits that have way more benefits than you would ever imagine if you actually look into them. So produce is super duper important. Uh, definitely have to have, uh, you know, as organic as possible, natural as possible, um, and definitely clean as possible uh, for your produce selection. Tip number two, I know this took me a long time to get to, but anyway, is their juices and their water. Uh, in their produce section at Whole Foods, they do have a whole section just for juices, but they also have an additional section for larger juices that are more like family size and like the cartons. I usually get their 100% orange juice with pulp. Uh, I really like that option, and they have a few other drink options. And then the other thing, aside from juice as far as drinks go, is water. Of course, you have water from tap if you prefer that, if you have like a filter for your water system. Um, but unfortunately, in some places, the water can be questionable, and a lot of people just buy bottled water just to buy bottled water. But if you are, you might want to spring for what is called alkaline water. Alkaline is being carried more and more in stores that are becoming more health conscious for their health conscious uh, consumers. Um, they have them at Walmart now. They have alkaline water at Kroger. I love Kroger because they have like the bottle, the skinny little bottle that's, it's not as big as a smart water bottle, but it's like, it's, you know, like a, you know, long kind of, uh, this, the size, the shape is similar. But anyway, um, you know, there are other waters out there that are more acidic and that, I don't think that's good for your body if you look at, if you look into it. Um, so I try to drink as basic of water as possible in order for my body to not have to work harder to uh, get my body back into a more neutral pH for it to maintain its regular functions. And so if you find a store that carries alkaline water, that's a pretty good indicator that they may have more products that are for the health, health conscious consumer that will be better for you and more advantageous for you. So alkaline water is probably something you should try. I really like it because I always notice when I drink regular bottle, bottles of water that I would get kind of this burn in my throat. And I never understood why, but it makes so much sense now that I've learned that the pH is higher with those waters that, you know, I'm like, well, no wonder I get that burn in the back of my throat. But I don't get it when I drink our tap water. And when I drink, of course, alkaline water, it's so much smoother. And, you know, I don't feel anything, any other sensation. It's just pure water for me. Um, a lot of people put in um, different, like, I guess, flavor enhancers or what they, whatever they call them, like, uh, I forget what they call them. Uh, like, I know they put a lot of sodium benzoate and stuff in water, which I think makes it more acidic. Um, but there are other ones, the alkaline waters, they put like pink Himalayan salt or other natural ingredients that are within autoimmune protocol to give it minerals and things like that, uh, that make it even better for you. So definitely keep those in mind when you see juices that are 100% natural, uh, no preservatives, uh, that are really fresh, like, you know, their expiration date is like a very short span because it's a fresh product, and then alkaline water. Those you have to keep in mind. And also sparkling water. There are also sections where they have sparkling water that is actually uh, very natural. It's just pure carbonation and maybe natural flavoring from the essences of oils. That's another strong indication that you found a really good autoimmune protocol store as well because that is very natural, very close to uh, being autoimmune protocol if you're not sensitive to carbonated products. Number three is going to be the meat section. The butcher section is definitely a strong indicator of whether they're a good store for you or not. Uh, like I said, if you've seen my uh, posts on my blog, 
Aldi was one of the first autoimmune protocol shopping lists that I came up with because Aldi has a great selection uh, throughout the year, especially of grass-fed beef that is ground. They have the best price that I know of. Currently, the price is, a, is approximately $5.24 for each pack, which is pretty much a pound. And yes, that is pricey compared to regular beef, which you could probably get for like 2 or $3 a pound. But grass-fed beef has tons of benefits, especially because of its fat. Um, it's uh, from what I hear from when my I wrote my own research. Uh, the the grass fed beef is not nearly as uh, detrimental to your body compared to regular corn fed, grain fed, soy fed beef. Uh, pretty much. Um, and grass fed beef is supposed to be advertised as organic. There are some. Uh, what stores that did advertise it as organic, they had to pull that from the label because you cannot advertise something as organic or grass-fed that is not organic or grass-fed. Uh, also, another place that has decent meat sections aside from Aldi would be, uh, I believe, Sam's. Uh, Sam's has grass-fed meat. I believe Costco has game. They have, like, I think hens and stuff that's, like, wild game meat that doesn't have any preservatives in it. I haven't been to Costco. I do want to check them out one day if I, if I can. Um, but I have been to Sam's Club, and I've gotten their grass-fed lamb. It is so expensive, but so worth it, because having lamb with, like, rosemary, oh my gosh, it's so delicious. Um, but anyway, though, so Aldi and uh, Sam's Club are where I usually get uh, my be my grass-fed meat, uh, be it lamb or be it beef. Oh, and of course, the best place to find different cuts of beef would be Whole Foods because they carry short ribs, they carry uh, the steaks, they carry ground beef, they carry so many different cuts of the meat. And if you get tired of ground beef, which you easily do, Whole, Fo Whole Foods is probably your best option. Whole Foods, what I like about them is they have different stages that they categorize their meats. And I think I do usually stage four, stage five, which indicates that it's, I think, locally grown, organic, 100% grass fed. Uh, like they tell you the conditions of the meat like in its entirety, which I really appreciate. So strongly recommend, recommend Whole Foods if you have the budget for it. If you're being extremely budget conscious, and you just want to try grass-fed beef, it is a very strong flavor compared to regular beef. And you definitely want to eat it while it's fresh because it, the fat will harden even more. And uh, depending on what seasonings you put in it, the fat will take on the color of that seasoning. Um, it's definitely different, but the flavor is so wonderful and so abundant compared to corn-fed and antibiotic-fed and non-organic feed um, fed uh, cows that you can tell that it's healthy for you. Um, but yes, look very intensely at the meat section. Uh, see if they know if their meat, meat is locally source, sourced. There are some butcher shops that actually make it a point to advertise that they do not put fillers in their meat. Um, I know of one butcher shop someone was telling me about where they do not put fillers in their steaks and things like that and their other meat products. And they were saying it was literally the best steak that they've had in their whole life. So, you know, unfortunately, fillers is a thing that people put in meat. They're putting all sorts of stuff in your, in our food. It's really sad. But Whole Foods definitely tells you from point A to point B what's in your meat. And I appreciate that by Whole Foods. Um, I think, what is it, Trader Joe's, they also tell you. That was actually what tipped me off to learning about things being uh, fed to animals that you're eating is because I was going to get their organic chicken, but on the back it said that they feed them soy. And so I was like, oh, maybe I shouldn't eat this because they're feeding them soy and I can't have soy. So why would I eat something that's been eating soy, you know? Uh, so that kind of causes chain reaction for me. Now I'm back to eating chicken, clearly because it's easier. If I just go to Whole Foods and get their naked chicken, which is super bland, I'm not going to lie, it's so bland. Uh, but you can spice it up if you're putting it, tossing in the right seasonings. Or if I'm okay and comfortable with eating black pepper, I'll have their salt and pepper chicken. I love their salt and pepper chicken. That's my favorite from Whole Foods. Love it. And, or if I just want a plain, um, as plain as can be kind of chicken, I'll get Kroger's Colossal Chicken, which is like pretty pricey as well, but they are bigger and they do season them with sea salt. So they're not 100% plain. Um, I usually use their uh, chicken when I'm making uh, my avocado pureed uh, chicken salad uh, that is one of my favorites and then I will eat those kind of meats from there so yes checking out their rotisserie section their butcher shop 
uh, those kind of things are very important in finding the right autoimmune protocol store. With this as well, there is number four, the seafood section. The seafood section must have things that are considered wild caught. They must have things that do not contain preservatives. A lot of stores have huge selections of fish that contain additives such as, oh goodness, let me get my um, list because I, I made a whole list of it which is, ugh, it's so sad, but let me see. Um, here it is. Okay, these are the additives that they commonly put in there, and I'm going to have this in my other video about no-no ingredients for Omni Protocol. And these are preservatives such as sodium bisulfate, sodium pyrophosphate, sodium tripolyphosphate. <laughs> Those are very commonly put in there. Anything that you see that has a parenthesis that says preservative or to maintain fr freshness or whatever have you, anything like that, it's a preservative and you probably should avoid it, especially on autoimmune protocol because preservatives are just, they're like carcinogen city, I'm pretty sure. I'm not 100%, I'm not an expert in this, but I mean, anything that is not natural, I mean, not paleo pretty much, you should strongly consider against. Um, consult your physician or nutritionist if you are not sure about a product. Uh, definitely like weigh each uh, ingredient with a grain of salt. But personally for me, if it's not 100%, whatever it's supposed to be, then I'm like probably going to pass. I did really love all these tuna steaks. Of course, now I know I can't really have tuna. I can't have tuna or uh, I think it's called haddock, which is so good. But they're fatty fillets, which I think contain brewer's yeast or they're bad for people who are supposed to avoid brewer's yeast or whatever. But I used to love uh, their tuna steaks at Aldi, but they would put artificial smoke in there. And artificial artificial smoke is like, if you look it up, it's... It's not autoimmune protocol, I'm fairly sure. So anyway, um, I just stick to if I am going to buy fish from Aldi, which I haven't lately because the consistency of the fish hasn't really been the best. Unless it's one of those seasonal fish, the specially selected products that they have only a few times a year. Like sometimes they'll have whole lobsters. Um, sometimes they'll have like right now is fall that right now they're having what is it called halibut fillets which are 100% just halibut um they have also tilapia fillet no not tilapia I'm sorry flounder they also have whiting that is 100% whiting um so they have certain fish fit certain kinds of fish <laughs> that do not contain those kind of preservatives and those ones I will go for if I'm buying them from there but to be honest I haven't really purchased a lot of fish from all these lately but that is an option if that's the only store close to you if I buy fish usually usually it's from Whole Foods or Kroger um, Whole Foods like I said they they have some great deals uh, occasionally uh, where they will give you like a big discount compared to what the normal price is they have also a wonderful selection of frozen stuff they have like a seafood metal medley of stuff they have crab meat that does not contain preservatives that's the thing at Kroger's I looked at their private selection of crab meat and they put in a preservative which I couldn't have I, it was probably one of those that I just listed but uh, the crab meat at Whole Foods is 100% crab meat it's a it's slightly dry but I mean you can just jazz that up I mean I put it in my crab cake recipe and it is amazing uh, so definitely if you can spring for it try their crab meat try whatever uh, Whole Foods has to offer as far as seafood goes they have an incredible phenomenal selection of Whole Foods at Whole Foods I haven't seen anywhere else that has as big of a selection or the freshness I'm gonna be honest I go to so many stores um, but I think Whole Foods and I mean Kroger can be reasonably fresh but like I said I have to really really be, be on edge with Kroger and read every single label to make sure that it's 100% of what it's supposed to be and so moving on number five baking and sweetener section okay now, this is going to be an interesting one for you if you haven't really explored the autoimmune protocol uh, ways of baking and cooking just in general. So, of course, there are mainly three oils that you can cook with uh, for autoimmune protocol. That's coconut oil, avocado oil, and olive oil. Olive oil, you mainly want to use if you're having something that's lightly warm or usually just a cold dish and you don't mind the olive uh, taste because olive oil burns very easily. So people usually opt to use coconut oil instead, but coconut oil solidifies terribly at room temperature. I remember when I used to work at a movie theater, they used to, they tried to use coconut oil, but it kept hardening overnight because you know how cold movie theaters get. And that was before I even went on autoimmune protocol. I didn't even know about it. But uh, yeah, I mean, you need to like 
figure out what she's going to do with coconut oil. They have some that are like a liquid form, but I think those contain uh, different ingredients that are questionable as well. So avocado oil is usually my go-to cooking, cooking oil. I use it for both my cold dishes and my hot dishes, especially my hot dishes if I'm frying something or if I'm baking something. I love to use avocado oil because it adds a very light, ta light tasting fat to a dish, which is really wonderful. Also with coconut, even though it does solidify annoyingly at room temperature, the uh, coconut has so many different kinds. Like I can't believe there's so much, uh, so many ingredients that they can make from a coconut because they really make a lot of products from coconut. I'm going to have a whole video and a whole post devoted to that as well. But anyway, aside from that, those are three oils that you have to work with. So if you can find a store that will contain those oils, I know Walmart has enhanced their oil section. Um, Whole Foods has always had a decent cooking section with the finest of quality ingredients. Aldi has um, improved their olive oil game tremendously, and they always have had coconut oil that was cold pressed. Let me think about what other section, what other stores and sections have I seen with a lot of uh, oil selection. I think that's about it. Uh, there, I can't think of any other ones, but palm shortening is something that you can find typically at Kroger. You can also find it, I think, at Food Lion. I've seen it. Uh, I don't know if they still carry it, but palm shortening pretty much is like, it's almost like butter. Uh, it tastes very similar to butter. Um, if you check out this cookbook called he won't know it's paleo. She has a really great butter recipe that she uses palm shortening in. I have other things that I've used palm shortening as, but I mainly just toss it um, in, in with my uh, plantain pancakes. I can't, I do eat eggs from time to time and I, I use eggs for my plantain pancakes. I haven't tried using them with gelatin or anything else. I probably will. But, uh, you know, I usually have them as like butter for my plantain pancakes or waffles, whichever have you. And so look for like coconut products, oil products uh, that are within AIP. And if you have those, that'll be amazing. The sweeteners, um, I mean, it depends on what you can and can't have. For people with brewer's yeast free like me, they say you can have stevia extract. I don't think I'm really good with that. I don't think my body likes stevia. I'm going to still test it out to see. Um, also, maple syrup, people use as a big sweetener. Honey is the biggest sweetener, and I love honey because it adds a creaminess because most powders that you get on AIP for flavor or whatever are very chalky, and honey helps smoothen that out a bit. Um, make sure your store has carries local honey. I know that Whole Foods does. Whole Foods almost always has a local honey brand around, um, and a few other of my local like markets that have like healthy products. Uh, carry around their local honeys as well. So check out the baking and sweetener section. That's tip number five. So all in all, these are all of my tips. Um, of course, my bonus tip, which I just thought of at this moment, is of course Amazon. Amazon, you can buy stuff in bulk. You can, I mean, if I can afford it, one of these days I'm gonna get like a gallon jug of avocado oil because I use it that much. Um, <laughs> and uh, you know, like that's pretty much the biggest tip I can give you is buying in bulk as much as possible. Even at random stores like Ross, which doesn't even have really a like food section. Um, but I but I have found plantain chips with coconut oil at Ross. I have found uh, avocado oil at Ross like and uh, pink salt at Ross. I've found all sorts of interesting stuff at Ross. Um, but, you, but it's very hit or miss there, extremely. But if you're looking for a place that has consistent stock of an item, Amazon, of course, is tops. And like I said, Walmart is very hit or miss with their healthy food section. I don't think they stock it as much and how, as often as they should. Um, Kroger's pretty consistent. Um, and I mean, that's about it. I mean, like I said, I've like I, my top stores, I'm going to try to list them in order. My top, top stores would probably be Whole Foods and Kroger, like really even, even tie almost. Um, let me see what else. Fresh Market, Walmart, Aldi. Well, Aldi's probably before Walmart. So Aldi, Walmart. <laughs> uh, let me see. Asian markets, my local markets, even though I'm mad at them right now because they keep, you know, they keep ending the products that I love. Like I have so many products that I find there and discover there before I even get to big stores like Whole Foods and then they stop carrying them because they say they don't sell well enough. I'm like, whatever, buy it on Amazon then. So that's what I'm going to do is buy it on Amazon. And I think, let me see, that's about it. My friend up north, I was visiting her and she has this place called Lotte. 
Lotte Mart, they had amazing products there. And I found those same products on Amazon as well. If I ever find enough items to constitute a blog post or a video, I'm going to mention shopping there as well. I think they're, they're a similar franchise with them as H Mart. Um, they're like an Asian market as well. So you're going to find a lot of exotic fruits that way. And you find a lot of like Korean products that are like 100% like sweet potato noodles is a Korean product. Um, there are so many other products that I'm going to tell you about throughout the course of this video. I mean, not this video, but other videos on this channel. You're going to learn so much from me. I mean, I learned too much about everything. But anyway, that pretty much sums it up. Those are like within my top 10 amount of stores. Oh, Amazon. Why am I not including Amazon? Amazon should be in like the top three. Okay. So like forget about whoever the last person I mentioned was Lotte Mart. Uh, like, okay, so um, Amazon, Whole Foods, uh, Kroger, my local market, Aldi, Walmart, uh, fresh markets. Uh, gosh, what are the other ones? And then I guess my Asian markets. Um, I don't know. That's, well, that's eight. So at least you guys know eight places that I definitely go to. Those places may or may not be close to you. Like I said, I usually defer to Amazon not only because I'm an affiliate, but also because Amazon's pretty much everywhere. So if you can't find it in a local store by you, if you live like really far away in the outskirts of town and you can't get there very close and Amazon's convenient for you, please do purchase something through my affiliate link. I will get a commission at no additional cost to you. I think I may have said that earlier in this video, but just in case so that, you know, you don't think I'm pulling the wool over your eyes because I'm being upfront as upfront as I could possibly can be. But anyway, those are my budget friendly uh, or not even budget friendly. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, they are somewhat budget friendly because I'm telling you where you can get some good deals at. But um, that's my summation of different ways to assess whether the store is perfect for your autoimmune protocol needs. Hopefully you find it helpful. If you do, please tell me in the comment below. If you have any local stores that you find are autoimmune protocol friendly, I would love to hear about them so I can check them out myself and maybe tell you about my experience in the future. For now, my funnily lovelies, have an amazing day.